How to pay no taxes with real estate? What if there was a legitimate way to not pay any taxes when it comes to real estate? We're gonna cover that in this video. Are you tired of shelling out money to Uncle Sam? Understand, there are hundreds of different ways to reduce your tax liability. Real estate has probably got more rules than any other investment strategy out there. Not knowing the rules is your fault. In this video, we're gonna show you a plethora of different ways, big word alert, plethora of different ways where you can avoid paying the tax man. Now listen, I'm not a tax professional, I'm not a CPA, so you need to talk to your professional advisor on this stuff. These are general principles when it comes to real estate. You've got so many ways to avoid, and I wanna say avoid, but they're set up for you to win. If you're gonna own rental properties, the number one is depreciation. So again, in other videos I've talked about it, the tax code is written for you to benefit and to keep money into the system. And the more likely you are to keep money in the systems, the more benefits there are, which gets right down to depreciation. So if I'm keeping a property and I'm renting it out, I avoid short-term capital gains to avoid uh, to go to long-term. And number two, I've got depreciation. So they're gonna take that property, depending on whether it's commercial or residential, they divide the price point into those years and you get to depreciate that every single year. So there's a way to reduce taxes on it. Any expenses you've got on the property becomes obviously an expense of the property which reduces your overall taxes. Because I'm in the real estate business and I got other videos that talk about forming LLCs and what have you, I am a business, I can write off my vehicle as long as it weighs over 6,000, I think it's 300 pounds at the time of this recording, somewhere in that over 6,000 pounds. This is the reason I've driven a three quarter ton truck for well over 25 years because it's called 179. What that means is the 179 exclusion means I can write that truck off in the entire year. It's called accelerated depreciation. So let's just say I paid $90,000 for that vehicle. That's about what a new truck a three quarter ton truck cost nowadays. That means I can write off $90,000 in one year off my taxes, even if I haven't paid for the vehicle yet. So I could literally put $5,000 down, finance the balance over five years, I still get a $90,000 tax write off, which means that reduces my liability by $90,000. So in all retrospect, in a high tax bracket, about half of that is being covered by the government. So really what it comes down to on a particular tax year, I'll have my CPA say to me, you need to buy a new vehicle. The only time he'll ever say that because of you know the value of the car drops right when you drive off the lot, but when you're buying a new vehicle, half of that or thereabouts, talk to your tax professional about that, I can write off. So it's almost like getting a vehicle and the government pays for a majority of it for you. That's a example of that. You've also got 1031 exchanges, okay? So if I sell a piece of property and I do have a big profit, Okay, I can always say I'm gonna buy another property. Here's the challenge with 1031s. There's some cost involved um, and there's also you, timing. You have to have had to pick the property out. It's gotta be a similar property. So there are a lot of things that you need to be aware of. Okay, so be very, very particular and careful when you're doing a 1031 exchange. The other way to do that is with a private retirement account. And I've got other videos on that. So if I do the deal within the private retirement account, that avoids those also. So those are just a few of the ways that you can avoid paying tax on it. And let's go over some more. Those are the big ones though. There's other ways to avoid taxes, particularly depending on where the property is located. They've got um, qualified empowerment zones out there that will also offer tax breaks on it. Here's one that's just so obscure out there is if you've got a piece of property and you let livestock graze on that, it avoids property taxes on that. So you're avoiding property taxes. So you can literally buy a property for back taxes, then not pay any property taxes on it as long as you let animals graze. And that doesn't sound, it's not so outrageous as you think it is. I've had students take advantage of that and it's a big, they buy big pieces of land and avoid paying property taxes on it by just letting animals graze on it. Here's another one. Whenever I'm investing in a piece of property and doing some rehab, I always wanna to talk to the county and find out what type of tax incentives there are. 
if I put weatherization windows in there, if I upgrade the toilets, there's all of these different programs out there that if you do certain things, you will get certain tax brackets. Rental is a big one. So if I'm gonna provide rental housing to a certain sector, elderly housing, low income, whatever the case might be, they'll say, okay, if you do that and you rent to these people that are already qualified for that, we will give you a tax break on some of the rental income from there. So there's all sorts of gamuts in there. And look, you know, not knowing the rules is nobody's fault but your own. So, you know, it's fourth down and 20, and you didn't know you could punt, that's on you. You need to understand all the different rules out there and the tax advantages that you can take advantage of when owning real estate. Let's get away from the actual piece of real estate. The fact that I'm in the business of buying real estate, whether I've got one or not, the fact that I'm trying to make this happen, there's the home office um, write-off. Um, you can start writing off um, uh, expenses that you have when you're going out to look at the property, some of the software that you need, maybe prop stream or some of those things that you're buying. All of those become a tax deductible item for your business. Any expenses that you've incurred while acquiring that property becomes a tax deductible item. It may sound small, but there's a lot going on with that. I mean, if I'm spending $10,000 a year in different software, new computers, camera, travel and all that, if I didn't literally categorize that as a business expense, you know, in a higher tax bracket, you'd have to make 17, 18, 19 thousand dollars, then pay taxes just to spend the 10 thousand dollars. That's not really fair. So the government comes in and says, "How about if we do this? Anything that you've in, um, incurred as far as expenses to make that business operate, we won't charge you taxes on that. That way, we can funnel that money back into the business, getting the money back into the system. There's that whole um, uh, strategy. They're trying to keep that money out there." Once you do that, then we'll worry about taxes on the bigger profits later. Oh, you got a big profit? Why don't you keep the property and we'll go long-term capital gains on that? Or no-term capital gains because you're gonna buy it within a retirement account. There's a number of different ways to avoid the taxes on it. Um, remember, I am not a tax professional, but as a real estate investor, you need to start understanding this, okay? Talk to your tax professional, find out what other areas in there that you're missing. It could be as simple as having your kids work with you on that. Hire them, pay them $13,000 a year. That becomes a tax deduction to your business. They don't have to pay any income taxes or even report that. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna spend at least $13,000 on my kids every single year. Why not do that tax-free? Here's just a few of the things you're looking at. If you just take that window, of what can I write off because I'm in the real estate business, a whole plethora of different opportunities start coming up. And literally, everything's about real estate, okay? Real estate's everywhere you go. You should be talking about real estate. You should be doing real estate. You should be buying the software that helps you evaluate the real estate. All of that becomes a deductible item to help you make the big money that we're talking about. And I know you're gonna need some help in this area and that's why I've set this up. Just go to higginsmethod.com, fill out the information. I'll have one of my professionals call you and see how you can take advantage of the systems in front of you. This is Sean Higgins saying God bless and good luck.